Let's open up the book of Acts. Acts chapter 10. Martin. Book of Acts, chapter 10, we're going to pick up from verse 1. Acts, chapter 10, verse 1. There was a certain man in Caesarea called Cornelius, a centurion of the band called the Italian band, a devout man, and one that feared God with all his house, which gave much alms to the people, and prayed to God always. He saw in a vision, evidently about the ninth hour of the day, an angel of God coming into him and saying unto him, Cornelius. And when he looked on him, he was afraid, and said, What is it, Lord? And he said unto him, Thy prayers and thy alms are come up for memorial before God. And now send men to Joppa, and call for one Simon, whose surname is Peter, who lodged with one Simon a tanner, whose house is by the seaside. He shall tell thee what thou art to do. And when the angel which spake unto Cornelius departed, he called two of his household servants, and a devout soldier of them that waited on him continually. And when he had declared all these things unto them, he said, he sent them to drop him. On the morrow, as they went on their journey and drew nigh to the city, Peter went up upon the housetop to pray about the sixth hour, and he became very hungry, and he would have eaten. But while they made ready, he fell into a trance, and saw heaven open, and a certain vessel descending into him, as it had been a great ship deep in the four corners, and let down to the earth, wherein were all manner of four-footed beasts of the earth, and wild beasts, and creeping things, and the fowls of the earth. And there came a voice unto him, Rise, Peter, kill, and eat. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again a second time, What God hath cleansed, that can all God come. This was done thrice, and the vessel was received up again in heaven. Let's pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, thank you, Lord, for the opportunity, Lord, that we have to be here tonight, gathering your name, Lord, to be spiritually fed by you, Lord, to learn more about you, Lord, to be challenged by your word, Lord, and, and uh, just to be here to serve and sing and worship you, Lord. Father, I pray that you might use me tonight, Lord, and Brother Sam, that we might speak, Lord, the words that you have laid in our hearts, Lord. In Jesus' name, I pray. Amen. So, uh, before we dive into the message, there is a certain things that we need to understand about this. Uh, this is one of those passages that, when we uh, read the first time, it kind of seems weird, kind of seems like uh, a bit hard to understand. But, um, there is an explanation in the Word of God, and we're going to just do a little of study before we dive into the message. And uh, what I wanted to say, the first thing is that the Jews were not supposed to eat common or unclean animals. And uh, that was given by God as a commandment to the, 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 the Hebrews when they came out of Egypt in the, the book of Leviticus, and then was repeated by God again in the book of Deuteronomy. So let's, I'm just going to read here the book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14, verse 3. You don't have to turn there. Thou shalt not eat any abominable, abominable thing. These are the beasts which shall eat, the ox, the sheep, and the goat. Verse 7. Nevertheless, these shall eat not of them that chew the cud, or of them that divide the cloven hoof, as the camel, as the hare, as the cub, and the camel. For they chew the cup, but divided not the hoof. Therefore, they are unclean unto you. So, uh, to the Jews, the Gentiles, they were considered unclean. The same way that these animals that God told them not to eat in the, in the book of 
both wrongly. They were considered unclean, and because of that, they're not supposed to eat these animals. So that's why Peter uh, actually said no to God three times in his vision. And uh, we're gonna get there uh, in a few minutes. But um, this vision is not about eating unclean animals, but it's about preaching to the Gentiles. Because even at this time in Acts, they were not focused on the Gentiles too much. The word is focused, was focused on the, the Hebrews, on the, the Jewish people only. So um, let's dive into the message now. Let's read verse 2 again. A devout man who wanted to fear God without his house, which gave much alms to the people and prayed to God always. So here we can see that God, he reaches out to the people before and prepares their heart to receive him. Um, this man, he was a Gentile, he was a, a Roman uh, in the military, he was a centurion, so he had a hundred soldiers uh, that were commanded by him. And, uh, but he was a devout man, the Bible tells us that he was a devout man. Not only that, if we keep reading this chapter, we're going to see that he was fasting for four days before the angel came into him. And uh, also the Bible tells us that he was giving alms to the, the poor and praying all. So he was a devout man, he was ready to receive Christ, but he needed knowledge, he needed somebody to guide him to the world. And we're going to see that in just a moment. Um, so I'm just going to read here John 4, 35. We don't need to turn with me there. Say not we, ye. There are yet four months, and then cometh the harvest. Behold, I say unto you, Lift up thine eyes, and look on the fields, for they are white already to harvest. So here Jesus is talking to the disciples, and uh, he's using a, a metaphor, a, a simple way to explain that the harvest he's talking about is not the harvest of the, the crop, but he's talking about the harvest of the, the lost that are ready to receive Christ as their Savior. And uh, we can see from the passage from this main text that we are reading that Cornelius was one of those examples of those that were ready to receive Christ in their heart. So, beyond that, God works on both ends. He not just prepare the person that is ready to receive Him, but He prepares the one that is going to uh, witness and preach to those people. Uh, we just read from this main passage here that Peter, he fell into a trance and he had a vision and God spoke to him, telling him three times to eat of common or unclean animals. So this was the, the beginning of the preparation for, for him to, to preach to the, the Gentiles because not even the apostles, the disciples, they were not even uh, paying too much attention to the, the Gentiles. As I mentioned, the word is, was at this time, at this point of, in, uh, in time, it was more focused on the, the Jews and not on the Gentiles. So let's read verses 19 and 20 from, from chapter 10. Verses 19 and 20. While Peter fought in the vision, the Spirit said unto him, Behold, three men seek thee. Arise therefore, and get thee down, and go with them, doubting nothing, for I have sent them. So here's what I was just explaining. God not only prepares the heart of those that are going to receive Him, but He prepares those that are going to preach, and bring the message to the Gentiles. This is very important, because sometimes we don't know what to say to people. I have this <laughs> all the time. You know, when I have to talk to somebody, when I have to witness to somebody, sometimes I don't know what to say. But we need to trust God and understand that He's the one that puts the right words in our minds, in our hearts, to share with the people. You know? And not always they're going to receive it. You know? people, some people didn't receive Christ Himself. So not always they're going to receive what we have to say to them. But we need to be comfortable and trust God that He's going to put the right words in our hearts to witness and to share with them. And there's also another thing. Sometimes you don't need to um, witness and, uh, and give them like, 
an hour of explanation about the Bible. Sometimes just one invitation, a simple invitation to come to church is enough. If we read from the book of John, John, verse 145 and 46, if you want to turn, turn down with me, please. John 1, 45 and 46. Philip findeth Nathanael, and said unto him, We have found him, of whom Moses, in the law, and the prophets did write, Jesus of Nazareth, the son of Joseph. And Nathanael said unto him, Can there any good thing come out of Nazareth? Philip said unto him, Come and see. So this is the perfect example. You know? Come and see. Now we, we might invite somebody to come to church, and they might say, we might tell them, You are. Your, uh, your past, what God has done in your life, and they might say to you, but can really God do something for me? And you, just, you might just say, as Philip said here, come and see. You know, that, that might be enough. God might be working in their hearts once, once they come to church. So, this is one important thing that we have to understand that um, when we invite somebody to church, and uh, when we witness to somebody, it's not our words. It's Jesus is speaking through us. With what happened here, when Nathaniel met Jesus, Jesus just, just did the rest. He just spoke to him a few things, and Nathaniel believed. So, uh, it's always good for us to remember that God is the one that put the right words in our hearts, in our hearts, sorry, that we might share with the people that He wants us to share with. Uh, okay, so let's read verses 14 through 16 again. Verses 14 through 16. But Peter said, Not so, Lord, for I have never eaten any unclean, anything that is common or unclean. And the voice spake unto him again the second time, But God hath cleansed that cannot thou come. This was done thrice, and the vessel was receiving up again. To have. So sometimes we get so focused on things that are not important that we just miss out on the chance to witness to somebody. Peter, he was, he had good intentions because he, he thought he was obeying God by not eating of the unclean animals, but he was wrong because God was giving him a direct commandment to eat those animals. And, um, I'm just going to read to you from the book of Genesis, a passage that helps us to understand uh, about the unclean and clean animals, and about what they were supposed to do in that regard. So Genesis chapter 9, verse 3 says, oh, go back there. <laughs> Genesis chapter 9, verse 3. Every moving thing that liveth shall be meat for you, even as the green herb I have given you all things. So, just to give you a background about this, here is when Noah and his family come out of the ark after the flood, and God is speaking to Noah and his family, and he tells them, Every animal, every living thing is going to be meat for you. So, from this time until the time of the Exodus, they were allowed to eat any animal that was on the earth. You know, it's not that those animals that later became unclean were fundamentally unclean. They weren't clean because God told them, this is meat for you and this is not meat for you. So the commandments about the, the animals that were about to be meat or that were about to be unclean for them, it's not that those animals, as I said, were fundamentally unclean but just it dealt with obedience and separation because God wanted these people to be separated from the Gentiles from the other peoples that surrounded them so when Peter disobeyed God he probably knew about uh, what the commandments that God gave to Noah in Genesis uh, chapter 9 so uh, he disobeyed God and there was we see from this passage that there was no um, 
begs for him to do that. He should be obeying God in this. And you know that he had good intentions. Peter is one of the uh, most impressive uh, disciples in my way of seeing because he was the one that was always willing to go the extra mile even among the disciples. You know? When um, they saw Jesus walking on water, he was the only one who said, Lord, bid me to go to you. And he was the only one who was willing to walk on the water and uh, to walk towards Christ. None of the other apostles, the other disciples, were willing to do that. So, even though that he was sometimes wrong, we are all wrong sometimes, he was the disciple that was willing to go the extra mile. And uh, the next point here is that uh, sometimes when God is dealing with somebody's heart, they don't fully understand the Word of God, they don't fully understand um, what God is putting in their heart. So they need assistance from us, from those who know the Scriptures, know what is true and know what is not true, to guide them into the Word of God. Um, I'm just going to read from the book of Acts, chapter 8, verse 30 and 31. Here we have this, the history of the Ethiopian eunuch. So, Pastor was just talking about this a couple of weeks ago, but um, I'm just going to read from verse 30. And Philip went thither to him, and heard him read the, the prophet Isaiah, and said, Understandest thou what thou readest? And he said, How can I, except some men should guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come up and sit with him. So, um, this is a very interesting passage. If we read the verses before this, these verses, we see that this man, he was an Ethiopian eunuch. He was a man of respect in his own country. He was the keeper of the treasures. And um, I believe that he was really excited to go to Jerusalem and to worship. And uh, he wasn't going only to worship. He was going also to find some answers because he couldn't understand the word of God by himself. So. He probably thought, okay, I'm going to Jerusalem, there's lots of priests, masters of the law, there's lots of Pharisees there, lots of people that know the scriptures from inside out, and they can guide me to understand the word of God. You know? But he went there, he worshipped, and nobody was willing to assist him and to guide him into the world. So he came back pretty much frustrated, because nobody was willing to to uh, sit with him and guide him into the Word of God. We're just going to read verse 31 again. And he said, How can I accept some men shall guide me? And he desired Philip that he would come and sit with him. So from this verse, we can see the frustration this man had. Because he really wanted to know God, he had a desire to know Christ, but he couldn't understand the Scriptures by himself. So he was willing that somebody, somebody in Jerusalem, somebody that knew the scriptures, would sit with him and explain the words to him. But nobody was willing. And, uh, and then the Holy, the Holy Spirit, he uh, directed Peter, sorry, Philip, to uh, reach out for him and to, ex and to guide him to the word of God, the book of Isaiah, and uh, explain to him and, and uh, to preach to him Christ. Right after that, he had received Christ and he was baptized. You know? His heart was white, was white to harvest. He was ready to receive Christ, but he needed somebody to guide him into the world. And that's our, uh, our job today with the Gentiles. There's many people everywhere here in East Jordan, in every place on earth, that are, God is hitting with their hearts, and sometimes we don't even know it. But there's a lot of confusion there. They don't know what is right, what is wrong. And if they try to go to the internet, they're probably going to get more confused because there's a lot of bad things there. So that is what we should do. That's how we can help them to know the truth and uh, to be free through Christ. So um, to conclude, the, this message that we just read from uh, this passage that we just read from the book of Acts, there is a very uh, practical 
use for us today. It's not the same exact use that happened here because we're not Jewish people preaching to the Gentiles. But um, there is a lot of uh, good things for us to, to receive and to learn from this passage. The first thing is that God might be putting in somebody else's heart. He might, he might be reading with somebody that we know. And uh, he might be putting that person's heart to receive Christ. And uh, as Peter, we might be thinking, Lord, this, this person, they are not worthy to, to receive him. They are not good people. They don't, re they don't deserve to receive Christ. You know? Or uh, we might be thinking, this person wronged me and caused a lot of pain in my life. And uh, Lord, they don't want to share with them. Or you might be thinking, I know them and I know they don't have any interest in things of God. But the truth is that the only one who knows what in someone, someone else's heart is God. And he's the one that puts the conviction in their hearts, it's not us. And um, if we are to be honest to ourselves, none of us deserve to receive Christ. None of us ever did. I know that I didn't and you didn't also. Nobody deserved to be saved. But I'm thankful that God saved me. So, uh, the main point here tonight is um, if God is directing you to witness to a specific person and He has said to you one, two, three times and you said, No, Lord, let's just remember verse 15. I'm going to read the, the passage again. But God hath cleansed that come up, thou come. But God hath cleansed that come up, thou come. Let's pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, Lord, your word is really challenging to us, Lord, sometimes. But we know that these words are words of truth, Lord, words of life, words of love. And Lord, the same way that somebody was willing to share it with us one day, Lord, and, and to insist it and um, it helped us, Lord, to be guided into your word and to understand, Lord, and to receive Christ. Help us, Lord, not to look to the exterior of people, or not to um, judge anybody, or but to to um, witness them, to invite them to church, or and to do that, which is your will for us, Lord, and for them. Lord, we ask your help, Lord, to do your will and um, and uh, to be to have joy, Lord, and, uh, and just to, Lord, regardless if we want to do it or not, Lord. Father, in Jesus' name, we pray. Amen.